Hi everyone, I'm Maria Pitanyan, and today I'll be presenting my capstone thesis for um, the Bachelor of Engineering Sciences class of 2024. The title of my thesis is Adaptive Model of the Cell Membrane and its Implications on Cellular Response, and my supervisor is uh, Dr. Armen Alaverten. As um, this thesis will model the cellular membrane as an adaptive transportation machine, it is crucial to first define the nature of adaptation in adaptive machines themselves. Um, so the precise but sort of abstracted definition of adaptation involves a device or organism that uh, has a that performs a function useful for the device itself or to the user of the device. Uh, optimal performance of this function demands a fit between the device and its environment, and in the most interesting cases, this fit uh, occurs without any direct sensing of the environment itself and or without any feed-forward mechanisms, so via feedback mechanisms only. Um, in this context, in the context of this thesis, the model of the cellular membrane that will be developed will be analyzed in the context of non-monotonic dose responses, namely uh, hormesis. So what are non-monotonic dose responses and what is hormesis? Uh, dose responses uh, describe the relationship between the administered or um, access dosage of a stressor or of, or, or of a stimulus and uh, the level of the magnitude of beneficial or adverse effects. So the standard model, this is the standard model of dose responses, the linear threshold model, which describes no effects at all under a certain threshold and a linear dose response relationship beyond this threshold. This is the less known hormetic model, which shows um, that a drug or stimula stimuli that have adverse effects at high doses can actually have unique beneficial effects below a certain dosage. Um, and our results will be interpreted in the context of this dose response theory. Uh, the aim of this research is therefore to um, obtain a model of the cellular membrane and analyze its response and performance uh, from the perspective ad of adaptation. Um, why is this important? It has been shown time and time again that biological systems, complex biological systems, share many characteristics with high complexity technologies. And um, both including similarities in response, uh, fragility, and both disciplines can benefit from a dialogue about these similarities. However, this dialogue has been greatly prevented by things like discipline fragmentation in engineering and a lack of thermodynamic uh, models in biology. Uh, so to start off, we have to define our basic transportation machine and its basic function and output. We take a trap that captures and releases particles, and it has two corresponding Markov states, a state with zero particles and corresponding energy E1, and a state with one particle and corresponding energy E2. The difference between the en these energies, delta E, is going to be the crucial parameter that we optimize and fit to the environment. Uh, the function of the machine is therefore to transport particles from a left to a right, right reservoirs, both of which it is coupled to. And its main output is going to be in sort in form of a net current from the left to the right reservoir. This net current can be mathematically expressed uh, as follows, where each uh, term rho to 1L, for example, represents the transition rate from state 1 to state 2 due to the left reservoir. So this term represents the desired flow. This is the backflow, which is subtracted. And using this expression for current, um, maximizing this output with respect to the parameter delta E, we obtain the following uh, needed fit between the internal state of the machine, delta E, and its external environment. So the result we obtain is that the uh, delta E parameter has to be equal to the mean chemical potential acro across the cellular membrane. This is not a trivial result, and this is used heavily in future uh, analysis of the function and performance of the adaptive machine. So now to discuss the controller structure S. This is uh, the structure right here with its own parameter, inverse temperature theta. And it's uh, indirectly altering the state delta E of the F machine. The controller represents a protein in the membrane, uh, and its transition rates ob obey the detailed balance. What does detailed balance mean? Uh, well, it simply indicates that each uh, elementary process is in equilibrium with its reverse process, and that the um, controller always has a precisely defined uh, temperature. So all processes are assumed to be quasi-static. Um, S is improved by altering transition rates and inverse temperatures. So these are the possible transitions for a two-state system. These are the 
zero particle states and one particle states. And this is one delta E value, and this is the second delta E value. Both of these correspond to different environments, and S alters the machine between these two states. The dynamics of the system is going to be represented by a set of four differential equations describing joint probabilities P alpha I, which is the probability of the machine, of the controller being in state alpha corresponding to an environment mu, and uh, at the same time, the um, machine itself being in state I, corresponding to the number of particles. Um, with this model in mind, the first um, feature of adaptive machines that we will analyze is its fragility. So these are, this is a two-state environment. It's adapted to these two states. These are the two environmental states that it is optimized to function in. And as we can see, current is maximized at both of these um, environmental state values. However, when a small disturbance is applied in either direction, either to the left or to the right, this uh, adaptation breaks down and the current decreases significantly. And between uh, these environments, the machine is going to work suboptimally, if at all. So what is the implication or importance of this? Um, this is, of course, a two-state system with two environmental states, but we could ex extend this to many states and imagine that we have more adaptive states here. And this shows us that if we are at equilibrium or homeostasis at any point, a small disturbance or a small change in the chemical potential is going to affect uh, function more and is going to result in breakdown more than a larger change that could end up uh, taking us to another adaptive state. Uh, hormetic dose responses can be interpreted in, the, in such a context, such that low doses uh, provide this disturbance and have completely different effects that break down the typical function that we would see with that specific drug. That's why we have a bidirectional relationship between dose and response, uh, because this fragility works differently for large changes and for small changes. The second thing that was analyzed is the thermodynamic limits and of the overall costs of the adaptive cellular membrane. There are two uh, features of adaptation. The first feature has already been discussed. It's that F must have internal states corresponding to commonly occurring uh, external environments. So each of these internal states are optimal to a specific environment. And this has already been ensured uh, mathematically. The second uh, thing we want to ensure is that the controller S is able to choose correctly between these states based on the environment without directly sensing said environment, of course. So only with feedback mechanisms. Um, this is mathematically done through these probabilities. So we say that if the um, environment is in state one, for example, the probability of the controller being in state one as well should be as close to one as possible, and the probability of the controller being in state two should be as close to zero as possible. Uh, these can be optimized in terms of probably parameter pi, which describes the similarity between the two states. So it's a function of the similarity. When we have zero, um, the um, states are very different from each other. And we ha when we have values closer to one over two, the states are identical. We find that for highly different environments, of course, adaptation is more effective. Um, and for environments that are nearly identical, there is no adaptation per se. So the controller will simply function randomly and both of these probabilities will be one over two. So analyzing a two adaptive state, first of all, with two internal uh, delta E's, we find that the maximum adaptation is two over three. So it will, the machine will essentially work on the incorrect adaptive mode one third of the time, at least one third of the time. In order to try to improve this value, uh, we added two more states. So we still have a two state environment, but each environmental state has two internal modes that work optimally. So two internal modes of the machine that work optimally in that environment. In this case, we are able to obtain perfect adaptation, but only if we have uh, very slow relaxation and a completely chaotic system where the detailed balance condition is not uh, ensured. If we introduce the detailed balance equation and define a precise temperature for theta, this again breaks down to two over three. The exact same results were obtained with six states, so there's a perfect adaptation for chaotic systems and two over three for detailed balance, which shows this two over three value to have some sort of underlying uh, theoretical limit. 
Um, the last thing that was done was uh, analyzing this adaptive machine in the context of other uh, survival strategies commonly employed by organisms. So a an, an commonly employed strategy, for instance, is a more robust, often referred to as bed hedging strategy. In this case, the organism simply has some information of a mean sort of environment that it's going to encounter, and it specializes in that average environment, as opposed to specializing in a range of specific environments. So this was modeled by just taking the mean value um, between the two environmental states and specializing in to that mean value. When we compare robust and adaptive systems, we see that at the concerned um, environmental states, these are going to be our most commonly environmental occurring states, the ones marked with black dots. At these states, for sufficiently different environments, the adaptive system has a significant advantage because the current of the adaptive system at the values that we're concerned with is significantly higher and the robust system has almost no current at all. As the environments grow most more similar, um, the models are comparable to one another and the robust system even provides better performance in values between these. Although these are low probability values, it's still a good bonus to have as it provides extra stability. And for sufficiently similar environments, we see that the robust system actually overtakes the adaptive system and provides a better current. Another way of comparing these two was to um, subtract the mean currents from one another. <coughs> so subtracting the mean current of the robust system, of the adaptive system from the robust system. In this graph, all positive values indicate better performance for the robust system and negative values indicate better performance for the adaptive system. And we can see that for environments that are even slightly similar, adaptation is not an efficient mechanism as the robust system has a significant advantage. However, when, adap when um, environmental states are significantly different from one another, adaptation has a much larger advantage. If we look at the amplitude values over here, they're much larger. So adaptation is a very advantageous survival strategy if we have two um, sufficiently different environments that we need to specialize to. So by developing this model of the cellular membrane, three main characteristics of adaptive systems uh, were outlined. The first is the fragility, the fact that specialized systems are fra more fragile to small disturbances than larger ones. And this can pave the way to explaining non-monotonic dose responses, such as hormesis, by showing uh, what a vastly different effect small disturbances and large disturbances can have on such a complex adaptive system. The second is the cost of adaptive analysis. So we found that for uh, when there is a local equilibrium and a precise temperature for the controller theta, perfect adaptation is impossible and any efficiency above 2 over 3 is going to require significant time and a lack of local equilibrium. Finally, comparing to robustness, we see that adaptive strategies are preferred in highly variable environments, while in environments that are not as variable, robust strategies uh, provide better performance and stability. Um, this is the aim of this thesis, of course, was to pre present a uh, thermodynamic model, thermodynamic ap approach to cellular response. Um, and I hope that this can, <coughs> that continuing this work uh, can help provide a theoretical groundwork for approaching uh, cellular response and related problems, as well as different uh, approaches to control theory and generally control systems. That is it for my presentation and here are my references. Hi. So, yeah, uh, well presented. Uh, I, I have a question. Maybe I missed something, but in the last, in your conclusion slide, I think you had a, uh, so when you talked about fragility and you have this blue text and you cited something earlier from what you said with this uh, hormesis. Yes. Is that right? So my own intuition, I feel like this fragility seems to be a, a problem because I, I imagine, but I think this is where I'm maybe wrong, uh, that a lot of these cellular processes might actually have some variation around some target. In, in other words, uh, small disturbances 
my, my intuition tells me they'd be likely. And if they're likely, and this model is uh, demonstrating fragility, it's almost like, right, tuned to these different states. If, if I understood the argument right, saying large disturbances might land you into another stable so position. And so, so you're saying intuitively it should uh, be used to small disturbances? Uh, it, it, I, I feel like w how is it uh, the model, I guess I'm missing the value of the model given that I imagine that small disturbances would be frequent and thus sort of like model breakdown? Or am I, is what's wrong with my uh, uh, kind of... If, I'm, uh, if uh, I'm understanding the question correctly, the nature of the sort of fragility lies more in... It's a bit more complex than I presented here. Uh, it's basically a difference between inadequate, what's called inadequate and adequate stimuli. So we have adequate stimuli, which are the um, normal concentrations or normal environments that the cell would be used to. And we have inadequate stimuli, which mm -hmm. sort of um, still cause a response in the cell, but they're not the thing that the cell is adapted to. So mm -hmm. the cell sort of interprets these stimuli as something else, and that's why it, this fragility exists. Like a well, below threshold or something like that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, can, can you give a, may, maybe just a very simple example of like how that, I, it wasn't clear to me, how could a large disturbance land you still into a, I, I got that there is multiple states, but where, where does that happen? Is it in, in like ion channel or what, what are well, examples of a large, this? A large disturbance would be, um, would be essentially another st state that the cell is used to encountering. Mm -hmm. So the cell may be used to um, large dosages of something, of an inflow, but these small dosages may disturb it. An, an example, for example, of inadequate stimuli, I don't fully understand this, but um, if I'm not mistaken, sometimes um, eggs, for example, react to other things as if they were sperm cells. And these is a, this is an example of like inadequate stimuli mm -hmm. uh, triggering cellular response when they shouldn't, and in that sense, deteriorating the function. There were a couple of other examples, but I can't mm -hmm. remember them no, off no, the top great. of my head. Okay, thank you. Very good research paper, but can you give us an example of a real life project or product that this can be applied to? Uh, well, if adaptive systems are better understood, um, I think there can be a lot of applications in control theory in general, because this is a system that um, perfectly optimizes something like the cell membrane to its environment without sensing that environment. So if we, um, if we can fully understand the ways through which the cellular membrane does this and the way through the which other biological systems does do this, uh, we can develop better control systems that can adapt, that can uh, utilize better feedback control. By definition, uh, biological systems are very slow in reaction. So they have to uh, you know, learn how to adapt, they have to learn how to respond, and uh, I don't think that this is going to have a good impact on a, a product or a project. If uh, you're, uh, if you're thinking of evolution, this, uh, that's not the only sort of adaptation. Adaptation, uh, I mean, it arises through evolution, but a lot of these processes happen in milliseconds, nanoseconds lower than that. So I don't know. Um, the learning process of the organism is slow, but the actual response itself is fast to changes in environment. Aha. <laughs> 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 <
Specifically, what dose ranges it's unstable to. Mm -hmm. um, we can implement other external systems that sort of deal with that instability and deal with that. If we're talking about a machine that's based on the model of the, uh, that's based on the cellular membrane, built on the model of the cellular membrane. If we're talking about the cellular membrane itself, uh, the goal in this case is to just understand what different strategies, so adaptive and robust strategies, uh, can and cannot achieve and what uh, situations they can be applied mm -hmm. in. In Zokni Haskanamsen, yes, yes, the Information, but Yes, <laughs> I think can make chunk garo. Yet the information about adaptive systemi, since fundamental property, I make chunk garo. The pochel garo and kinch for external device nerov portal control anel address anel. But has that no bata ka avelishat has kanal na kan pochel cellular membrane information. 